Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part one of my quest system tutorial. We will go over and implement a quest system into our tone based battle system. This quest system is also, uh, or works also in any other, I don't know, engine and any other game. Um, and we are going to start with the first quest class today. Uh, which will basically drive the world system, or actually not drive the system, but will be the base of the world system. So let's get started by creating a new folder into our scripts folder. And this is going to be just everything about quests. And that's what I call it. And in here we create a new c -sharp script. And this is just going to be a quest. So again, this is going to be only a quest class. We are yeah, basically getting all the informations off or pass informations in and um, yeah, read that quest data from any other point, like from a quest manager object later on. I will go over and uh, yeah, open this one up as I said before in Mono Develop. What we will have is just a pure class. Um, this pure class does not need to inherit Mono behavior, so we can get rid of all of that stuff in here. And in the very top, we uh, create two. Uh, square brackets and in those we type in system dot serializable that means that this class is basically serializable uh, serializable of course but also we can work with that in the inspector also I get rid of start and update since I don't need that and what we are starting with is we are creating a lot of variables strings and integers uh, which uh, can a quest or has a quest um, internally. Uh, we may no, not need everything, but I want to make some kind of complete uh, system so you have the possibility to take everything you need from that. So what can a quest be is basically a quest has several states. A state of it is not available or it is available. A quest can be accepted, it can be completed and it can just be, com it can just be done. So and that's what we are uh, taking at first. So we create a public enum for this. So an enum is nothing else than basically a number of integers but we can pass it over names and what we do is we say this is going to be our enum and we call this enum quest progress with a big Q in the beginning quest progress and what I want this have into the curly brackets is I want all the states I just uh, told you inside that so the first one is not underscore available that means there is later on uh, or this can be unlocked from any point in the game for uh, from any level from any other thing from any other quest and so on and so forth and the next one is when it's unlocked already then it's going to be in the state available so that's our next state we are creating in here not for don't uh, do any typos. Then the next state is when we have that available and we accept a quest and we of course need an accepted state. So we uh, already started a, a quest. So we have accepted it, but it's not anymore available and nothing else, just accepted. Like, okay, we have that and we keep that. The next one is a complete state. So we have completed every condition we want of our quest. And the last one is going to be done. That means we have uh, we we just took that that particular quest and bring that to our quest giver, for example, or we did anything else and set this one to done. So when it's done, it's not available anymore. It's not completed. So it's its own state, and this state is basically nothing else. There's nothing left for that particular quest. So with that enum later on we can go and set every state of every quest whenever we want at any point and so on and so forth in the quest manager itself and then we don't have access to that anymore if it is done already or we can change all that states depending on what state they are currently in. Okay so a quest also has a quest title you can also name it uh, a name or whatever I call this one is going to be a title. So the title of that particular quest. 
I'm gonna uh, comment everything out so you might want to do that too so later on you might want to change something or uh, you can't remember to that so uh, you can every time comment stuff out so you know later on ah that was it the next one is a public integer and this is an ID this ID is driving the whole complete system because later on we just take an ID and uh, yeah, request that particular ID of that particular quest and we can have the complete information just with that ID. We don't need anything else. Um, and later on when we got that ID we can compare that ID with uh, whatever the quest giver has as an ID and take every information from that particular quest with just that ID. And that's uh, the cool thing about that system. Um, so this is going to be the quest number uh, or the, the ID number for that particular quest. The next one is a the, the, uh, the connection to our enum over there. So it's going to be public and of type quest progress. And we call this one just progress. So we later on know, okay, we are in that particular progress or state and um, we can compare that state with any other states and set states depending on where we are currently at and so on and so forth. So those uh, or this is the state of the current quest. Uh, in brackets I just say enum. Uh, like this, so we know this is, uh, yeah, has the co or is a connection for that. If we don't have that, we don't have access to the enum itself, and we cannot set or get any information from this. The next one is another public string in this case. So now we'll, there will be a lot of strings, and this is going to be the quest description. So what we have is we need to describe for the player. Um, what uh, do we got or, or what what is the term or the info we need for that particular quest and that string is going to uh, be from from our uh, quest giver or receiver and the other strings the following ones are basically doing the same we have a public string hint so if we um, have accepted a quest but we want to have a hint uh, because we don't know what we want to do then we can go back to our quest giver and he will give us a hint and uh, we can be more precise in that hint for example just do this or just do that or go uh, to a specific point uh, go into a specific town or I don't know or kill goblins or whatever so that is the hint we are also getting basically from the uh, uh, yeah, from the quest giver or receiver, but still it will, everything will stay in that particular quest piece, of course. So then we have uh, another string, and this is going to be our congratulation -lation string. So we have correctly, or we have done everything, so basically we completed the quest, and what the quest giver will say, hey, you did it, that's great, just press down to the complete button or whatever, and uh, make this one full, and get your rewards later on. And of course, this is also from the quest giver, or yeah, the quest receiver, um, depending on uh, yeah, depending on what the string is about. So the next one is we can also have a summary so you can always go in and take whatever you need at information but the summary can be, I don't know, everything shortened again to whatever uh, the information is. I later on might not go over directly uh, over the summary or basically fill that maybe up with other things. Um, oh, I have misspelled that. So the summary can be used, but I will go uh, will not use that. The next one is uh, another integer, and this integer is going to be the next quest, and it's going to be of type integer because it will also hold an ID like this, 
which is unlockable from that particular ID we are currently completing or have done at that at a specific point. So this is going to be the next quest if there is any um, any new one like in chain quests for example uh, like a chain quest. Okay, then when we have that, we also need um, uh, some rules for our specific quest. I'm gonna leave a space in here. The rules are, at first it's going to be a string. You can also, the rule can also be an integer, but, uh, and you use um, item IDs, or you can it uh, use item names. So uh, it's up to you what you what your plan is or what your game is about. If uh, all your items in your game have an ID, then you can use a string, uh, an integer in this case. Or if you want to use names like enemy one, goblin one, and so on and so forth, it's all case sensitive. So make sure you have that later on correctly. And what you want to do is you want to say this is going to be our quest objective. So again, if you're using integers, um, or IDs for all your items, for all your monsters, for all your enemies, for everything, or for all your NPCs, uh, then uh, use integers instead of a string. I use strings, so uh, it's up to you what you want to do. So name of the quest objective. Um, this is also uh, used later on to remove items. When you, we ha uh, I don't have any um, yeah, inventory system uh, updated or created yet, so I might go over and create this one later on. And the next one is uh, the quest objective count. So another public, whoops, public. In this case, it's an integer because we need to count stuff up uh, once we are doing something. So this is our quest objective count. So that's the number um, we currently have. So this is our, go uh, our current number of uh, quest objectives or qu quest objective, objective count, whatever. So this gets updated and then we also have a requested object count or a requirement or whatever you will, will call this. So it's also a type of integer. It's going to be our quest objective, objective requirement, requirement. So, and this is going to be the require, the required amount of quest objectives. Uh, or quest objective objects, for example. Okay, and the last three are a bit special because we are not touching them in that whole particular uh, quest series uh, or quest system series, but later on when we have, um, for example, an inventory or uh, at least something like coins and stuff, I don't know, gold or uh, any other pieces, um, like, um, I don't know, like wood and ore, or whatever is in your game, then we can give that stuff as a reward. And every quest has a reward system, so we want to reward our uh, guys or our players, for example, with an EXP, like an EXP reward. So um, I believe I don't need to write anything for this because that's just yeah self-explanatory. The next one is we might want to have a gold reward. You again, you can call that whatever you want. It can also be any other stuff. And uh, since I again I use the string as a quest objective, I also will go over and say string item reward. Again, you can also pass in or use an integer. Oh, I have a small typo. So this is our item reward. And that's the wall class we are currently using to fill in all our data and 
with that done, we have actually, yeah, the base of everything at the moment and completed. In the next part, we're going over and create our quest manager object or quest manager script, which can use or make use of quest progress and of course take any new quests. We can fill in data with that and compare data from other parts later on. So that's it for that part. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.